What was your welcome to the NBA story? So my rookie year, Kevin Love was on the team. It's like second day of training camp. We're playing, we're scrimmaging, and they are down two. His team is down two, my team up two, and I'm guarding him. And he hits me with like the most vet move of all time, like push off, like caught my leg behind his leg, push me a little bit, step, they threw it to him. I try to contest it, just splash three for the win. And I was like, there's a reason this guy's like an all-star like. K-State family, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Cats Talk, hosted by Wildcat NIO. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. Be sure to like, comment, or subscribe wherever you find your podcasts, including Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. Please also follow us on social media. Your support makes it so we can continue to put out these podcast episodes. If you're looking for more information on NIL, please visit www.catsnil.com. Thanks for your support and go Cats. Hey, K-State Nation. Welcome to Cats Talk hosted by Wildcat NIL. I'm your host today, Pearson McAfee. And on this podcast, we're going to bring you exclusive behind the scenes access to some of the most influential, meaningful people here at K-State. Uh, so let's get into it today. We're, you know, we're going by NBA Power Four for the Cleveland Cavaliers, Dean Wade. Dean, how's it going, man? Good, man. Good, man. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I appreciate you taking some time. I know it's busy here coming up on, uh, on end of the season, playoff first, all those types of things. So thanks for, uh, thanks for taking some time. Absolutely. Anytime. Yeah. I want to kind of jump into it here. Let, let some of the viewers get to know you a little better. Uh, you know, you got married here a year and a half ago. Uh, we got married a month apart from each other. And that was uh, through another K-State basketball legend, Kayla Goff. So I guess tell us a little bit more about Kayla and your guys' journey so far. Uh, yeah, me and Kayla um, came into K-State together, just like me and you. Uh, that summer before our freshman year, we had, you know, everyone came to Manhattan and, and kind of got, you know, the feel of the, feel of the, little, the city and everything like that. And um, that's when I met her. Uh, I met her my second day, I think, or third day in Manhattan. And, um, you know, the first couple of times I met her, she was not a huge Dean Wade fan. Um, she said some things, she called me a couple names that I cannot repeat on, um, this. Um, but she was not happy and not a fan of me uh, at the time. Um, but then, yeah, our, our K-State journey was, was amazing. Um, and then senior year, we kind of started talking a little bit more and, um, rekindled, uh, a flame that was never there to be before. So you can't really say that rekindled, but um yeah we we kind of started talking we became inseparable um and then yeah our our k-state journey was just you know i know she had an amazing experience at k-state i had an amazing experience at k-state and um it it was it's great that we that's something we can look back on together but um yeah and then i left k-state cleveland got a deal with cleveland thankfully and um since then i mean me and caleb really been inseparable there's a couple years span there right after college where uh she worked in wichita and i obviously am in cleveland and so she'd fly up every you know, a couple of weeks for a stay for a week here, stay for a week there. Um, and then, you know, two years ago, she finally made the full commitment and moved up to Cleveland with me full time. And, um, yeah, the rest is history. Well, glad to hear that. I know the first couple of years after college for both of us, uh, growing COVID in the mix was definitely, <laughs> definitely an interesting factor. So glad, glad you guys are together up there now. And, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful wedding back in Manhattan. Love that you guys were connected in this community and. Have a special place to, to be a home away from home for you guys right now in Cleveland. And, uh, I know it's public info now, but many people may not, you know, know watching this that you recently became a dad. So congratulations. Uh, super happy for both of you. Uh, how's that experience been like so far? Man, it's been, it's been amazing. It really has. Uh, you know, she's four weeks old now. Um, and I really don't even remember life before, you know, before her being here. Um, she's amazing. She's, it's been definitely the best thing that's happened in my life. Um, definitely the best like title I've ever had is dad. So, um, it's been amazing. Um, it really has, you know, the sleepless nights every once in a while, you know, not my favorite. Um, but overall, man, it's been amazing. And, and we're super thankful and grateful for, um, her being healthy and, um, you know, she's putting on weight like a champ. So hopefully, you know, maybe be a K-State athlete someday. Love it. I love it. Well, if we can get her on the, uh, the Jimmy Price program, uh, maybe maybe that'll maybe that'll beat things up. For those who don't know, Jimmy Price was our strength and conditioning coach uh, back in the day. He uh, he helped us out, but he had he had some interesting ways of doing things. Yeah, like the, yeah, I can't. I'm not even gonna get into story time, but yeah, good guy. <laughs> no, if you, if you got a good one, you can you can share it. I know there's a lot of them. 
the thing that always sticks with me is um, Jimmy Price was if we were down in weight uh, after a lift, we had to weigh in after every lift. And if we were down in weight, you had to drink. So say you're down five pounds from what you're supposed to be at. You would have to drink five waters before leaving the weight room. I'll never forget. I, I would drink like five or six waters one day and we had an individual workout afterwards. And I had to tell CeeLo, I was like, I, I am not, I cannot do this. So he gave me a couple hours off, made me come back and do it by myself, but it was not my favorite. Factors delicious, ready to eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre prepared, chef crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and more. Get started today and have a feel good week of meals ready to go. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale options done easily. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing six to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Head to factormeals.com slash cattalk50 and use code cattalk50 to get 50% off. That's code cattalk50 at factormeals.com slash cattalk50 to get 50% off. The meals are no prep, no mess. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale options done easily. Sure. Yeah, that was interesting times, but all, all for the love of it, I guess. Um, yeah, we'll jump in here a little bit. I want to get to, I want to kind of jump into, you know, where you're at now, how the NBA has kind of uh, treated you. So besides the pace of the game, I mean, what's the biggest difference that you've seen between NBA and college basketball? Um, I'm going to say... Besides the pace, I'm going to say the physicality of it. Um, they really let you play. Um, that and the, the the floor is so spaced, so spaced in the NBA. Like, you know, in college, um, you beat your guy, you know, there's three, four people standing in the paint. Um, in the NBA, man, it's it's not like that. You might have one big in the paint. Um, everything's just so spread out. Everything's based on shooting now. And um, that and physicality, man, those guys, I mean, like you get like Embiid or Jokic in there, man, that's seven foot two a lot. You know what I mean? That's and they're strong, they're, they're physical, but they also know how to kind of play the game with the refs. Um, so if you, if you actually go lean in on them pretty hard, they're just going to flop and get to get a call. But, um, no, man, those guys are, are, you know, they're the top of the top for a reason. And, uh, man, they're, they're, they're good at what they do for sure. Yeah, no doubt. It's not, uh, it's not like playing down in Lubbock, Texas, where you're getting top side defending and you got, you got, you got two or three defenders coming over uh, on the baseline. There's, there's a little bit more space there, I assume. Yeah, just just slightly. Um, there's always broke like help side's always a little faster in the NBA, um, but it's only going to be like one person, and that person's usually going to be like seven foot, really athletic, and uh, that's definitely the biggest difference, man. Those guys are they're fast, athletic, and man, they and when they hit you, oh my god, you know about it. They they light you up. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not like getting dust in your in your breakfast at Lubbock, Texas, for sure. Um, there's some differences. For sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, what would you say the, the the hardest part of your journey coming out, kind of being in the G League into that two way, and then making an NBA roster? What was what was the hardest part in that journey for you? Um, I'd say the hardest part was uh, definitely my rookie year. Um, so you know, obviously in college I broke my foot. So going into the pre draft process, I wasn't overly high on getting drafted. I knew I probably wasn't going to get drafted just because you know my my injuries before and. Um, so like my biggest goal, my rookie year was just go out, play hard, be aggressive and, um, stay as healthy as I can. I didn't miss any games. Um, I missed one for a sprained ankle, but I, I came back and, uh, that was probably the big, the hardest thing was to travel between, um, uh, especially as a two way travel between the, uh, at the time, the Canton charge, who's now in Cleveland, um, going from Canton, um, on road trips, going to, you know, like Erie, Pennsylvania or, or Portland, Maine, um, and then flying to from there, just flying to say Dallas or something, meeting with the meeting with the Cavs there and being on a road trip. So I think one time the Cavs were on a ten day road trip. I was with them all ten days, um, and they were flying back after Dallas. I stayed an extra day in Dallas, and I flew from Dallas to Denver, Denver to Portland, Maine, and Portland, Maine met up with the Charge and was on a ten day road trip, the start of a ten day road trip there. So I was on the road for 20 days, had one suitcase. And so I was in the Holiday Inn doing uh, laundry with quarters 
remember that. That was, I mean, it's just, it was a grind, man. It, it really was. And, um, luckily I had a great team on both sides. Like the Cavs were unbelievable that my charge team was really good. Um, had some great, great vets on the team. So, uh, made my life pretty easy for the most part, but definitely the travel and, and just like the wear and tear. Um, cause you know, the charge play, another story, the charge play 11 a.m. Uh, school day game. So these kids in Canton get out of school. They come to the game. Well, the, the Cavs are playing at seven that night. So I played at the 11 a.m. game, played, it was a close game. I remember we went to like an overtime or two. Uh, we won. And as soon as I got out of the shower, uh, one of the coaches was like, Hey, you're reporting up to the Cavs right now for tonight's game. So I jumped in with the coach right after I had no bag, no clothes. And I drove from Canton to Cleveland, missed my shooting time, got to the game. We got blown out by, don't remember who, but I played the whole fourth quarter of that game. I was so tired afterwards that I showered and was sitting in my chair changing and I fell asleep. And the guy who drove me, who was his name, Sam Jones was like, Hey, uh, you know what? I'm just going to take you home and drove me all the way back down to Canton that night. And then I had to go back to Cleveland the next morning, obviously, of course. So, um, yeah. the travel between the two was horrible. Um, but man, but that journey was so fun. It was definitely wearing on your body, but man, it was so fun. It was, um, really was like an eye opening experience coming from college to really see how professional basketball really is. Um, that was definitely the hardest part. Um, but man, it was, it was like the most, the most, I won't say even say joyful fun. It was just like the most rewarding journey of the whole thing. So, um, definitely the travel between those two was definitely the hardest. Well, imagine what that schedule looks like. It feels like every year you guys go through a massive road trip. I mean, you said 22 days, right? Is, is that the longest one you've been on just because they overlap there? Yeah. Yeah. I think the longest one, um, we've been on as like, you know, as a, the Cavs one at one time was we went on a 13 day one and luckily it was, it was pretty nice because we went to like Denver, Phoenix, LA, LA. We had like pretty decent cities, which was nice. Um, that was last year. Uh, definitely those aren't bad because you know, you're flying, you have your own plane, you know, relax, recline all the way. I mean, those are, they, they're not fun, but they're not, you know, horrible at all. What's, uh, I guess what, tell me a little bit about, you know, you've been at Cleveland this whole time. Obviously you have to have enjoyed the system you played in. I mean, what, what sticks out to you of being in that organization, um, really from a system standpoint of, of why you enjoy being there? Man, I've been, I've been lucky as an NBA player to be in one place uh, this many years already. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful for that. But, you know, I think the reason I'm here is just like how I space the floor. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a pretty good defender as well. I think I'm like top in the top tier in NBA and de- defensive um, perimeter defense, ISO perimeter defense, which is, um, another reason I'm on the team still. Um, but definitely the, the scheme that we run, you know, we have Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, Karis Levert, you know, all these guys that can just make their own shot at any time. And I think the one thing they really need is space. And that's the reason I'm out there is just to give them space. You know, I stay behind that three point line at all costs. And, um, you know, if, if they don't have space and I'm open, they, they pass it. And my job is to shoot it no matter what. Um, and then I have to shoot the next one if I'm open. So, uh, there's no, that's the only reason I'm out there, man, is to give them space and, and play defense, really. Three and D. Hey, that's the name of the game. Uh, gotta do it. Speaking of that, I mean, gotta go to, the, gotta talk about the Celtics game a little bit earlier this season. Um, you know, I think a, a one thing that for most that, that don't know, uh, Dean had, had five threes in a game winning tip dunk uh, against the Celtics earlier this season. And, and they probably don't know. I mean, who, who was your assignment that night defensively and talking through what you were feeling when, when you went on to make those five threes and tip dunk to win the game? Uh, so my matchup that game was Tatum, uh, Jason Tatum. Um, I was coming off the bench, so I was only going to get probably three minutes of guarding Jason Tatum and then he'd go out and then I'd probably switch, go straight from Tatum to Jalen Brown to Jalen Brown into the first quarter. And, um, so my matchup for my four or five minutes in the first quarter was going to be that a couple minutes on Jason Tatum. He'd go out and I'd go to Jalen Brown. Um, that was the, the, the plan. And, uh, first half, that's what we did. And then the second half came, um, I didn't play at all in the third quarter. And then the fourth quarter started, we were down 22. I think 22 and um, you know, one of the coaches uh, when we were walking away from the, you know, little timeout chairs, he just looked at us and was like, um, don't like empty the clip. And that's what we did, man. He was like, if you can see the rim, shoot it. And uh, the Celtics always put their five man on me. And 
so I just was running at every action. Uh, and yeah, man, I hit my first one in the fourth quarter and I was, you know, it was kind of like, you know, everyone's kind of like, Oh, down 20, probably not coming back from this one. And, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened, man. I hit my first one and then they just kept leaving me open and, uh, made a few more, you know, maybe five in that quarter. And then, um, Darius Garland had the ball at the end of the game. Uh, we're down one and he goes to make a play and, uh, there's kind of, he was kind of dancing with it. And I was like, Oh, he's not, he's not passing this. He's going to go uh, shoot this. So, um, you know, for sure at the, you know, in the games, people don't box out. People don't like look for you and check you and box you out. So I was like, man, if he misses this, I, this is the best opportunity I got for, you know, put a put back or at least get an extra possession. And, um, he went in there for Zingas challenged it and he, he kind of shot it right over the rim. And I just so happened to be, um, running right in front of the rim. And I just, there was no one there except for me. And, uh, you know, I saw it coming off, so I, you know, I was like, "Oh, I'm going to dunk this." And and uh, I thought I really thought Jalen Brown, somebody was right under there somewhere near me. I was like, "Oh, he's going to come up and we're, he's going to foul me at least." Um, he did not jump, so uh, mine was pretty clear, and uh, that was probably the easiest shot I had all night. But uh, yeah, then that happened, and then the refs got into the time and all what's going on. So then we did a jump ball at half court with like point seven on the clock, one point three or something, and. Yeah, then the game ended and we won and uh yeah, got it. Travis Kelsey. It was Kelsey Bobblehead night there, so Jason and Travis were sitting court side. That was pretty cool. That was a cool experience. Um but yeah, that's that was a pretty pretty crazy fourth quarter. I was it was weird. You get in the zone, you can't hear anything, you're just kind of playing the game. It's, that's how I felt I couldn't hear any I couldn't hear the coaches talking. I couldn't hear any of the fans. It was um it was pretty special. It was pretty it was pretty fun. Yeah, it's a thrill experience. Obviously, I mentioned the, the Kelsey's there after the game, dap, dapping you up. And you guys were, were you able to go celebrate that one with them at all? Uh, no, they invited me out, um, to a place here in Cleveland, to, um, for dinner afterwards. They were all going and I was like, I would love to, but we had a back to back the next night in Atlanta. So, um, I went straight from the arena to the plane, plane to Atlanta. And, um, yeah, I got, got to Atlanta at like three thirty, four o'clock and I was just exhausted. And, um, I was like, man too bad we couldn't have a day off in between because I've been making sure Travis paying for all of my meals. <laughs> well, that'd have been a good time. That's all good though. Awesome. I'm oh, jumping a little bit here. Uh, kind of K state go down memory lane. I mean, when you think about your time there, what, what are some of those first, I mean, few games that, that immediately pop in your head from your time at K state? Uh, so when I think back on K state, man, my very first memory probably be, um, it's hard to go against the Oklahoma game our freshman year. That was pretty, pretty, pretty fun game. Uh, they were one in the nation, I think. And, uh, yeah, we ended up beating those guys or yeah, it was something like that. We came out and beat them. And, um, that was awesome. That was an awesome experience. Uh, and then obviously, you know, sophomore year played John Collins in the first four in, right? Yeah. yeah played John Collins in up, Dayton. In, up in Dayton. Yeah. In Dayton and, uh, beat them and, um, went to wherever we went and played, Cincinnati and uh we don't need to talk about what happened there but um and then obviously junior year senior year you know make the tournament and junior year make a run man that was amazing um uh, you know it sucks that I didn't get to play in it but um that was an amazing run S- still looking back on it was it was awesome um and then senior year man the, the one game that really I think about all the time is the Oklahoma game uh to clinch the big 12 title man I was that was awesome man the, the students were Juiced up there, man. The whole place was rocking, man. That was, that was a fun game. Um, and then, yeah, obviously got hurt. That's what, that sucks as well. But now that, that Oklahoma game was awesome. My senior year, um, KU game, my senior year was fun. Um, obviously the Virgin Islands tournament was really fun. That was a good time. Uh, but yeah, man, there's been too many, there really has been too many games, just good times in Manhattan, man. It's, it's hard to pick just like a few to, to throw out there, but. Man, there's been so many good times. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we were we were blessed to play in playing some three high level games. Uh, I guess maybe not we. I, I definitely didn't play unless it was a blowout at the end. But but for you to be in those games, I mean, we, we you know having the Big Twelve tournament, Elite Eight run, those types of things were were special experiences. And obviously, um, it, it sucked to have those injuries those last couple of years for those tournament runs too. But most people probably don't know that that you actually did get into that Kentucky game. I mean, walk us through how tough was it for you to even get out there for the few minutes you did. I'm pretty sure you had four points. I mean, it was 
it was only in about five yeah. minutes of play. So just walk people through like what that took physically demanding to, to get out on the court that game. We'll dive deeper into this conversation after the break. But before then, I want to tell you about our good friends at Home Field Apparel. Get on over to homefieldapparel.com and get your hands on some of Home Field's K-State selection of over 40 items that are thoughtfully created by Home Field's team. I personally have several pieces from their K-State selection, and I'm wearing my favorite Homefield sweatshirt today, featuring an old school Willie the Wildcat. Homefield apparel is incredibly high quality and comfortable apparel, and there's something for everybody at homefieldapparel.com. Be sure to use the promo code CATSNIL24 when you check out to get 10% off your order. And when you use that promo code, Homefield will donate 10% of your order back to Wildcat NIL so we can support K-State student athletes. Again, get on over to homefieldapparel.com today and use the promo code CATSNIL24. Uh, so yeah, we go, you know, into the tournament, start making our run and, um, see a couple doctors they're like yeah you have a stress fracture in your foot and i'm like ah man this is you know not good obviously and uh but they're like you might be able to play as long as you can you know move and feel comfortable moving and um luke Sauber, our trainer he was like looked at me and he was like we're gonna test it just for sure and so the day before the kentucky game um we're me and him are working out and he was like all right, now do defensive slides. So we do defensive slides. My foot is killing me and I'm doing defensive slides and I'm running. He's like, how are you feeling? I'm like, man, feel pretty good. Feel pretty good. And he's like, you, you think you can play tomorrow? I was like, absolutely. And so, um, yeah, the Kentucky game happened. I didn't warm up. I was out there for layup lines. Um, I didn't shoot a single layup. I shot a couple jump shots, sat on the bench. Um, looks like I don't really want to play you if we don't have to. Like, I don't really want you to go out there. Um, but, you know, Coach Weber looked down. I was peeking my head off the bench like, hey, right here. And uh, I went in and, yeah, man, I was first possession. Um, who was it? P.J. Washington tried to drive me on on the very first possession. Um, I stole it, went out of bounds. Well, I tipped it, went out of bounds. Um, and I was like, man, I'm feeling pretty good. A lot of adrenaline rushing, a lot of, a lot of adrenaline. And then I was went down on offense end. They were in a zone. I hit my first jump shot. I was like, oh leave me and I'm cooking hit one shot. That's what's what's going through my mind. I'm hot. And, uh, yeah, then I got fouled next possession and, uh, shot a couple free throws, made them. And, um, yeah, I remember being on defense and being like, man, my foot is like starting to ache, like really bad right now. Um, I was like, man, if I can just make it to the timeout, I think I can, if I get off it for a few seconds, I think it'll be good. Um, I must've been limping a little bit or something. Cause as soon as that timeout came, uh, Luke patted me on the back and was like, uh, yeah, you're out. And that was, that was the end of it. But yeah, that, those were, um, I don't, I don't remember how many, five or six minutes I played is it was pretty surreal, man. I felt, I felt like I was hot, man. I was like, yeah, I'm shooting every time I touch it. I only touch it twice, but, um, man, it felt good. It felt, it, it really felt good until the very end of that little stretch. But, uh, yeah, man, it was just unfortunate the way it went down, but man, I'm still, still grateful. I got the minutes I did in that game. Sure. Absolutely. Is there is there one play you can pick out? I know you you've listed a bunch of games, but is there one play that's kind of like etched in your mind um, of, of one of your most favorite at Cape State? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The uh, you know how Coach Weber used to be in practice. I just dunk it backwards. Just dunk it backwards. He used to say that all the time. And um, so we're at the Oklahoma game my senior year. You know, uh, shot clock's going down. I see the white kid from Oklahoma. What was his name? Brady Manick. He uh. He's in help side, but he's not looking at me. I'm in the corner. Cam drives. I just cut behind him, just right behind him. I get the ball. I'm like directly under the basket. And Coach Weber's face comes like pops into my mind. Like it was some telepathical stuff. And it's like, just dunk it backwards. Just dunk it backwards. And I was like, oh, I'm going to try it. Might as well. It's the last game in Bramlage. And I dunked it backwards. And I was like, so jacked. I was excited. And it was, it was you know, a big play in the game as well. But um, I think at that time, we probably had it mostly handled. And, um, no, nah, I just let the emotions kind of go, and it, it was a it was a fun time for sure. Incredible, I, it's, that memory is definitely up to my mind too. I know there's a there's a there's a pretty good picture of you you midair dunking it backwards, and yeah, yeah to what's uh, he, he always said that that's funny. Yeah. What's your what's your favorite memory of the K State when at your time? 
Oh man, that's tough. You know, we, uh, when you go back to it, I, I think, I think the game, you clinched the big 12 at home, you know, that same Oklahoma game. I mean, there's no better feeling, you know, being right there in, yeah. front, of, in front of the crowd and, and being able to celebrate with them right there. I know, I know back in 2013 when we clinched, um, they, they had a road game. And so they came back to the women's game and kind of celebrated and cut down the nets. But for us to finish it right there at home, man, that was, that was, that was a surreal experience. And yeah, uh, that stories we can't go into afterwards of being able to celebrate together was fun too. Yeah, it was awesome. Another one pops in my mind is Cartier when he, when he windmilled it at the end of KU game. That one was, that was, that was another one that sticks out in my mind. But yeah, that Oklahoma one's hard to beat. Hard to beat. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Cartier, I don't, I don't know if, if you thought that he was going to do anything like that, but I, I had no, it took even me by surprise. I mean, we knew he could do it. Um, obviously, but in that moment, uh, to pull that out, that was, that, that was, yeah, we're up like six points and he's just <laughs> like, you know what? We might as well be up 30. It doesn't matter. I'm windmilling this. Looks like, I'm all right. Good for you. Oh man. Big time. Kind of going in here to, to where Cape State's at now. Have you been able to spend any time with, with Coach Tang and, and any of the staff? Yeah. So I, you know, in the off season, I go back to Manhattan and, um, you know, I've been working out there the past couple summers and, um, I got to meet, you know, meet, get to know a lot of the staff. Um, I know a lot of them, especially during summer, you know, they're out recruiting, trying to, you know, going to tournaments. And so I don't see all of them that often, but I see, I see them quite a bit. Um, I get to know, you know, and obviously Luke was still there. So I always go and mess with Luke in the summer, but yeah, I got, I got to know him. Um, man, great. That's a great group, man. Great group of coaches, man. Those guys are high energy, positive people. And it's, you know, the way they go about it, it's, you know, the right way. And, um, you know, you can go in there every day and, and you can just see the culture they're trying to, they're trying to build and bring into it. It's, you know, it's an amazing thing to see. And, um, you know, when you go in there, you have no choice but to start smiling, man. Those guys bring so much energy and joy and, um, you can just tell they love what they do. And, um, there's never, there's never a dull moment in, in that facility. Sure. Yeah, great, crazy faith. It's, uh, it's, it's a contagious group. So it's been awesome. I guess tell us those, I mean, those summer runs with when all the old heads come back. And I guess we may be in that category of old heads now. Uh, kind of weird to think about, but, but tell us about those runs and going against the current players. And, and I guess just that camaraderie of being back around that, that college group and, and mentoring these guys and just like those, you know, those alumni came back and, and did for us. Yeah. No. Um, so, you know, I went back this summer and you had the, I think they called it the alumni week. We, we had scrimmage a couple of days there. Um, but man, when we go in and scrimmage, they take it like a real game. Like they do with their warmups and they do their huddles. We have quarters. And, um, I don't think they understand, but like they're in way better shape than everyone else there. Like if they just got out and transitioned and ran every single time, like I was in shape, like I was in shape, but I wasn't in like playing shape. Those guys are getting, you know, getting after it in the summer. And, um, that's why I told them, I was like, you guys just get out and run. You guys are going to beat us like every time. And, uh, they didn't. And we, we won like one game and then they ended up winning the second day on bad calls by the coaching staff, probably. Um, but no, it's, it was, it was, it was fun, man. You know, you see, it's weird to go back and look at it, man. Like we were in those guys' shoes one time. Um, I remember my, my freshman year, we went back and, um, I forgot who all came. It was like Curtis Kelly, Jacob Pullen came back, played. Jamar Samuels was there. I think he was in rehab. He was rehab though. Um, obviously Gip and, and those guys that came back and man, I remember looking at those guys like, man, these guys are legends. Like how'd they do it? And, uh, so now being, when I went back and, and, uh, after the, after the scrimmage, you know, we got to talk to them a little bit and, um, just give them our point of views on, on life and things and what they need to, you know, how they should go about it and what we regret and what we liked about it. And, um, you know, it's, it's weird. Like we were in those guys' shoes. Like it didn't feel like it was that long ago, but you know, it's pretty like, you know, I don't know a long time ago for us now, but, um, no, it, it is, it, it was fun, man. Those guys, especially like last year's group, man, they were so tight and, and connected, um, in the summer at the time and they were playing really good basketball as well. Um, and, and the coaching staff, man, they were, they were so connected. Like, I don't know if there was ever, I don't know a team that I've been around that's been like from top to bottom, every single coach, every player, like so well connected and, um, you know, just, enjoying being around each other at the time. Like I know there was times in the summer workouts when I was there, I was like, man, I do not want to see anybody, any coaching staff right now, man. I'm just trying to get my workout and go home. And, uh, 
but no, that team was man. They were they were fast, played fast, shot a lot of threes, um, played defense, picked us up full court. I remember that. I was like, oh god, like chill out. I am not ready for this right now. And um, but no, that team it, it was fun, man. And um, you know those guys, they were young and. And you could just tell, man, they were sponges. They were trying to soak up everything we said and, and put it right into the game, you know, instantly. And I was like, it's not exactly how it works. Like, take what we say, but, you know, work on it. Um, and it'll be it'll be great either way. And uh, But, no, it, was, it really was a fun week, and I didn't know what to expect. And those guys, man, they treated all us old alumni like like real family. And um, it, was, it was amazing. It's something I will not miss out on ever, I don't think, until I'm done playing basketball. And then I'll probably coach. There you go. The plan? No, I will not. I'll not actually coach. I'll just coach the scrimmage, just so I can watch. Yeah, Same. I love. I love it. Kind of jumping back in here. Uh, what What was your welcome to the NBA story? Uh, I got a few. I got I got one. My actual welcome to the NBA moment uh, actually happened to me in practice. Uh, so my rookie year, Kevin Love was on the team. It's like second day of training camp. We're playing, we're scrimmaging, and they are down two. His team is down two, my team up two, and I'm guarding him. And he hits me with like the most vet move of all time, like push off, like caught my leg behind his leg, pushed me a little bit, step, they threw it to him. I try to contest it, just splash three for the win. And I was like, there's a reason this guy's like an all star. Like this dude had a 30 20 game, you know, 30 30 game. I'm like, this guy's an animal. And, um, but my first in game one, I would say probably either my very first NBA game was against the Knicks. And, uh, I got ISOed on Julius Randle first play. I got checked in. They threw a little mid post ISO, ISO and threw it in and he ripped baseline and put his shoulder right into my chest. I didn't fall or anything. Like it was good defense still. Um, but when he hit me, I think he even missed a shot, but he hit me. I was like, Oh, this is serious. Like this is, this is the real deal. Um, that was my very first one. My real first moment was when uh, KD was in the house. It was like my fourth or fifth game. And uh, yeah, I got switched on to him. He called an ISO and I played great defense, but Kevin Durant only misses when Kevin Durant wants to miss. So he, uh, I was like, well, there's that. Those are my, those are my moments and um, none I'll, I'll forget very soon for sure. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, having having a guy like Kevin Love to kind of um, obviously, you know, the the saying goes, you know, iron sharpens iron, and uh, and having him around I'm sure had to be helpful, especially those first few years. Uh, kind of tying in with with college and the NBA now. Uh, you know, we played against uh, George Niang from Iowa State our freshman year. So, what 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 does it feel like to be his teammate now? Is that is that an interesting dynamic there? How, how's that go? Uh, no, it um. It's great. It really is, man. That dude's awesome. He really is like the best teammate. Um, you know, when we were in college, you know, we're playing him like you knew he was a smart basketball player. You knew his IQ was high and, you know, all that. Um, but until you're like around him and see him like day to day and uh, see the way he approaches the game, like that dude is like might be the smartest basketball player I've ever played with. And, um, you know, he's his IQ is off the charts, like really is. Um, he's getting the most out of his body. He's doing, you know, everything he can do to stay in the league. And, you know, he's doing it at an efficient level. I mean, he's putting up numbers. Um, but the the one thing that, you know, separates him is, man, his competitive fire, man. When he gets out there, is like no friends. He might not be the fastest, the strongest, can't jump the highest, like, but he's still going to get to his spots, get his angles. And um, and the way he knows the game, man, he can kind of manipulate it how he wants it. Man, it's, it's impressive to see. Um, funny thing about George, first day we walked in, um, he just looked straight at me and was just said FK state just like that. And I was like, F Iowa state. And then it was just like, he's like, all right, cool. I'm George. Get it like, out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know who you are. Yeah. Trust me. That was, that was probably like the welcome to college moment. I was playing against that team. I mean, Monte Morris and, uh, oh gosh, Matt, Matt Thomas, right. That was the, that was their yeah. shooter that year. I mean, that was, that was a heck of a team to go against. So. That's funny. I like I like getting it out of the way from the get go. You know that Farmageddon rivalry runs deep. So, absolutely, Farmageddon, baby. Yeah, awesome. We got a couple more here. We'll hit quick hitters just to finish it off. Appreciate you taking some time. Uh, what what would be a hidden or a couple hidden talents or passions that people may not know about you? Um, 
So I'm an avid outdoorsman, like love hunting and fishing. Um, that's my favorite hobbies. My, oh, my hidden talents, pretty good at ping pong. Uh, not great, but pretty good. Um, I don't really know if I have any hidden talents, you know, my talents are kind of, you know, out there. I'm okay at basketball. Um, I'm okay at, you know, fishing. I'm okay at video games. Yeah, I don't really have, well, definitely not singing or dancing. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's a tough one. That is a tough one. We got a video game for a while there. I mean, did you ever think about getting getting on some, some Twitch streams? I, I streamed twice, and a lot of people really liked it, but I was like, man, this is not – I can't do this every night. I don't want to play video games every night. I'm just going to play a couple times, and then people were like message me on Twitter like, hey, when are you getting on, man? When are you streaming again? I'm like, oh, okay, I'm shutting this down. I play video games <laughs> to relax and, and talk to people. I'm not doing this. And, um, exactly. I was decent for like in the middle of Well, it had to be like in the middle of COVID when there was almost no human interaction. So you're probably like looking for that too, if I remember right. Yeah, absolutely. It was literally right when, you know, you couldn't do anything, couldn't go out and sit down at a restaurant. You had to wear masks everywhere. I remember I was like, man, I'm just going to get on video games to talk to my friends. And that's literally all I did. And um, one of my buddies was like, you should, you should stream, see what happens. And I streamed. It was really fun. I had a lot of people in there like checking in on me and, and talking. And I was like, this is a lot of pressure. Yeah. I can do it. Man, I hear you. What is, uh, I guess, kind of on that note, what, what is your ideal off day routine then? Um, so right now, man, get up, um, uh, coffee and breakfast for me and Kayla. I make eggs, bacon, you know, the American classic coffee and, um, sit down, hang out for a while, talk, you know, we used to, like usually used to read when, you know, it's not nice today, but, uh, the past few days, not it was nice enough to sit on my back porch and, and read and talk a little bit for our morning coffee and then, um, get up. I'm going to go. On my off day, I go lift and usually get a workout in, and um, that only takes a couple hours, and I'm back home. And um, now I'm just being a dad, hanging out, and um, seeing what whatever she needs, and try to do my part as much as I can. You know, dad's first couple months of life feel pretty useless, and it's uh, right on par because I am pretty useless. Um, but no, I just kind of hang out, man. I'd like to stare at my baby, just like that's like my favorite pastime right now. It's just like this is crazy. Um, but yeah, man, like. I do that and then uh, might play some video games, check in with my boys a little bit, uh, talk to my family. Um, and my perfect off day would be, it'd be nice enough to go outside and uh, might go play around a round of golf here and there. Might, might just go to top golf, might go out to eat something like that. Um, but yeah, that's my, my perfect day is just to hang out, relax a little bit, get a nice workout in the morning, um, be done by 11 noonish. And then, uh, yeah, just be home and be present, be, you know, talk, just try to, you know, communicate as much as I can with Kayla and um, make life as easy as possible on both of us. Sure. That makes sense. I know, uh, I know neither of us were, were at K-State when, when NIL was a thing, uh, but obviously a Wildcat NIL just trying to help, help, help guys that were in our, guys and girls that were in our position, um, just make sure that, that they're doing things the right way and, and able to, uh, you know, monetize based on that. I mean, with, with coming off this past year with K-State in general, just play in this new age of college athletics with NIL, Transfer Portal, all that. Do you have a message that you'd like to say to the K-State fans or, or even some of the K-State players in general on just, on just what this means and some advice from someone who, you know, who did it the right way and, and made it to that ultimate next level? Uh, yeah, man. I mean, I don't know how the landscape or, or how college works with this NIL. Um, I mean, Wildcat, Wildcat NIL is doing a great job. Um, I see them all over social media and stuff like that. So, uh, you guys are doing an amazing job and, you know, I think, you know, if you keep it up, I mean, it's just so hard, um, in this day and age to like decide what, like, I couldn't even imagine being in the shoes of these college athletes trying to choose between, you know, different schools and, and, you know, the money coming in and the money and all this stuff. But, um, the one thing, man, I can tell you about my experience at K-State, you know, I know I didn't play with, for the money or anything like that, but, um, man, the people at K-State, man, I, I live there in the off season. Like I can't get away, man. That, that place is, um, such a big part of me and such a big piece of me and it's a town that i really love and um being just a part of the community man it, it means so much to me and um i can tell you you know from my personal experience being an athlete at k-state man you're treated with the utmost respect people love you i mean you're kind of you know that town runs on the college athletics and um everyone you know loves to see especially like the football team basketball team those guys man they 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 cheer you on man they support you 
at the highest level. And, um, you know, my ex- personal experience with it was amazing. Um, I know my first couple of years, you know, it was just the utmost love. I was so surprised, you know, I didn't know what to expect. And K state really blew my expectations out of the water. And, um, you know, the, the family atmosphere that every, every school preaches, um, I can tell you for sure that K state is, is the one that, that, um, you know, walks like, you know, they say it, but they also, you know, they mean it. And, and when you get there, you really feel it. Um, it's, it's really is an amazing experience. My, my best four years of my life, um, you know, bet some of the best people in my life, um, at K state. And, um, I know I, I met friends for life there and, um, I, I can't stay away, man. I love that place. And, and the K state family means so much to me. Um, you know, I, I feel like if I needed anything in this world, if I just went on like a K state forum page and asked that like, I would get it like this, or if I text, you know, you or, or, or any of my old teammates from there or coaching staff, man, they, they would try to help me up as, as much as they can. And, um, so I'm super grateful for the time I had K state, but I definitely say like the people and, and the, you know, the atmosphere of K state when I went there was just amazing. And, um, you know, that's one school that preaches family and they really, really show out and, and really prove it to you. And it's, um, it's an amazing place, man. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, I appreciate it, Dean. Thanks for taking time. Uh, good luck here finishing the year. I know still coming back, um, um, I'm from the injury side of things. So, so with some help, help for you here to finish the year. And, and I think from my understanding, you guys are at least, at least in the play in game of the playoffs at this point in the standings. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, if we make the playing game, this last part of the season went horrible. Um, uh, we should be just in the playoffs right now. Um, uh, and we will be, so it, it's, it's going good. Sure. Well, good, good luck with that. Uh, excited to watch you guys finish the year and, uh, then when, whenever that season is done or, uh, after the finals, look forward to seeing you Taylor and the family back in Manhattan. So appreciate you taking the time, man. Thank you. A- absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. K-State family, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Cats Talk, hosted by Wildcat NIO. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, or even leave a five-star review. And please follow us on social media. Your support makes it so that these conversations are possible. If you're looking for more information on NIL, please visit www.catsnil.com. Thanks for your support, and go Cats.